Welcome to Midwest Outdoors. I'm Michael Furseth with Baronet Blinds. We got a nice little yearling doe here, early season bow kill to butcher up. There's a lot of different ways to butcher deer, but today I'm going to show you a quick and easy way that keeps the meat nice and clean. Start by slitting the hide up the front of the animal all the way to the top of the neck, and I usually do that from the ground prior to hanging. Don't cut like this down into the hair. Always cut from the inside of the skin and out. Take a piece of tape, doesn't really matter what kind of tape, duct tape or packaging tape like I have here, and I go around the head at the base with that tape, and what that does is most of the hair that falls down onto your meat after you skin the animal comes from the head. So if you put a piece of tape around the head, it actually holds that hair in place and keeps it from falling down onto your meat. The next step is to hang them up. Now that the deer's hung up, you can start the skinning process. I like to use a knife with a relatively short blade, just easier to handle and easier to control for this part of the, part of the butchering process. Short little cuts, doing everything possible not to cut the meat or the hide. You're trying to separate the hide from the meat. So you want to make sure that you're not pulling meat off along with your hide. Once you get down to this spot, now it's time to start dealing with the legs here. Easy way to get the hide off the legs is to make a slit down the front of the leg all the way to the knee. Again, always cut from the inside out when you're cutting through the hide to avoid cutting any hair. Trying to keep as much hair off the meat during this entire process as possible. Once you slit down the front of the leg, then it's time to just pull the hide away from the entire leg down to the joints. First you bend the joint and cut through the tendon that runs down the front of the joint. Then you go all the way around the rest of the joint, cutting the rest of the tendons. There's a big tendon in the back that you want to make sure you get all the way through. Once you cut through the tendons, Bend the, bend the leg at a, 40, at a 90 degree angle and twist it to the inside. It's that easy. And then there's just one more tendon and the leg's off. Now just continue pulling down on the hide, removing it, making sure that you're not taking meat along with the, with the hide. Now that the hide and the legs are completely off, it's time to start quartering them up. I like to switch knives and go to a fillet knife, something with a little bit longer blade. Helps in getting into some of the deeper, deeper muscle tissue and makes it a little bit easier to quarter them. So let's get started. First thing you do is remove the shoulders. The shoulders come off relatively easily. Spread them apart, make, it, make an incision in underneath the shoulder. As you can see, this deer was hit right behind the shoulder and there's quite a few blood clots, but there's still a lot of good meat there, so stick with it. And you want to separate that shoulder all the way up, getting all the way around the scapula or the shoulder blade. There you go. That's one quarter off. The next piece of meat I like to remove is the neck. Just make an incision right along the ridge of the back on, either, on one side of the spine, cut along the top. And then just find the, find the vertebrae and slowly work the meat off of them. You can see I'm scraping right up against the bone, trying to get as much meat, meat off here as possible. That's one side of the neck. Once you get the neck meat off, now you want to remove the back straps. This is my favorite part of the animal. So as you can see, I'm putting the knife in right along the edge of the, edge of the ridge of the spine, and I'm cutting down along the back um, in a straight line, making sure that I keep my knife pressed all the way up against that, um, the, the top of the spine, the bones that stick up vertically off the top of the spine. Once I, once I made an incision about halfway down, then I start 
removing the back strap. So I just, I just keep my hand on the, on the back strap itself, and then I just start working from the top down, separating the meat from, from each rib. It actually sticks to the top of each rib, and you want to separate the meat right from that rib bone. After I get about halfway down, then I continue cutting down the ridge of the back. Again, just pressing my knife all the way down until, I, until I'm down to the pelvis. And then continue the same process. Be careful here, it's, it's, it's easy to leave meat on the animal. You're gonna wanna take your time and get it all of it. Now we're right down on the pelvis. I can, I can feel the, I can feel the point of the pel of the pelvis right here, and that's that's where the back strap stops. You're gonna you're gonna want to actually cut and get it right off the top of that pelvis. That's it. There's your back strap. First thing you do is make a cut right down the back, continuing that line that you did on the back strap right down into the tail. Then you want to. Here's, your, here's the, the blade of the pelvis. I'm not sure about the technical name, um, but what you wanna do is you wanna start separating the meat and scraping it right off of that, right off of that curved flat bone. hip socket is just right down in here. So when, once you get to the once you get to the the joint, the hip socket, you want to kind of cut the meat around it first. You see this tendon right here? Then you just cut that, connects the top of the ball joint right in the joint itself. Once you separate that, the, the quarter is pretty much, for all intents and purposes, removed. And you, and you gotta support the weight of the, of the quarter as you separate the rest of the, the meat from the, from the rest of the pelvis. Careful not to drop it, and that's your first hind quarter. All right, to remove the tender lines, uh, you're going to want to start by cutting the top of them off and separating it from the inside out um, at the top of the at the top of the of the tenderloin itself. Um, this is a rather difficult thing to do because the meat is so incredibly soft. So it's hard to, it's hard to separate the meat without accidentally tearing it. Scraping it off the top there. And once that happens, it should just pretty much fall out. You might not want to put this with the rest of your meat because um, like you see here, this one, this piece of meat's a little bit dirtier than the rest of the meat, just from being inside the rib cage and getting exposed to the to the gut pile and everything else. At this point, you have more than 95% of the meat off the animal. Um, on larger animals, larger deer, um, there'll be a significant amount of meat in between ribs. Um, some of the some of the meat that kind of sits underneath underneath this fat, you can also harvest. Um, an animal this size, you're not going to have a lot, but um, we'll, we'll scrape away some of these scraps and, uh, and finish this off. All right, now that we butchered the deer, uh, I'm going to cut a few steaks out of this back strap just to show you how I do it. First thing I'm going to do is separate the silver skin with the silver skin side up, just out to the end here, just to get it started. Got it started a little bit. I'm gonna flip it down.
grab it just like you would the skin, the skin of a fish. And fillet that off. Now we're gonna cut this section into uh, some steaks that are great for grilling. Uh, one thing I like to do with venison backstrap is make sure you cut them thick enough. Uh, one of the problems with venison when you grill it is that it gets dried out. It's a very lean meat, doesn't have a lot of fat in it, so it dries out very easily. So you wanna cut them good and thick so that they can retain some moisture. You always wanna cut against the grain, and I'm cutting it a good two inches thick. You just cut those off like that at a slight angle. Get a couple of these cut up. Now these are ready to be seasoned up and put on the grill. Thanks for watching. I'm Michael Furseth with Baronet Blinds. Stay tuned for more Midwest Outdoors.